Okay, so with that said, we're ready to move on to the second article, the five competitive forces uh, article, also extremely popular and uh, well known by a number of practitioners. The essence of this article is that Porter says, okay, people do a good job of looking at their immediate customers or competitors, excuse me, in the landscape, but they often forget that there's a bigger competition going on here, and that is competition for profits more generally. And what he says is that there are five main forces that will affect your industry's profitability um, and that you have to be aware as a senior executive, for example, or a mid-level executive if you're involved with strategic planning, um, you have to be aware of these five forces because, let me just give an example, say you're dealing with some really strong suppliers. If you have powerful suppliers, they are able to basically charge more money and accrue more of the total profit pie, so to speak, than you are. Because if they didn't charge you higher prices for their goods, you would be able to make more money. But in essence, because they've charged more of all the industry profit that's available, they've just accrued more. So you have to be aware of this. Um, let me pull up the Five Forces article just so we can be on the same page. These are, as you know, the uh, main forces that shape industry competition for profits. And so you have rivalry among existing competitors, for example. Um, I won't obviously go into a detailed uh, analysis or uh, reiteration of, of all of Porter's arguments, but as one example, a, um, there's a lot of rivalry among existing competitors if, for example, the product is relative, a relative commodity. That is, it's, it's generally um, one in which you can't differentiate it very much. So as an example, if you were in the wheat business or sugar business, um, I think you could argue that there isn't a lot that you can do um, to make sugar different. It's the same across all products, really. So the main way that organizations would then start to compete is on the basis of, for example, price cutting. And that can be very detrimental because then um, customers are accruing that profitability that would normally be the competitors to share. So to the extent that there's a really strong rivalry base among existing competitors, um, often you have to seed profitability um, because it generally comes to, for example, price cutting or spending more money to try and differentiate your product away from your competitors. So spending a lot more money on, say, R&D, which cuts down on your level of profitability. Um, to go to the left, the bargaining power of suppliers. To the extent that there are fewer suppliers uh, and there are a lot of customers, you being one of them, suppliers tend to have more bargaining power because they're, you know, there's, um, there are only so many of them that you can go to to accrue the resources you need. And as a consequence, they can charge higher, pr higher prices. Um, bargaining power of buyers to the extent that buyers are able, for example, to shift easily between products and there are not a lot of switching costs, you may well have to do things that make your product more enticing or that is spend money to make your products or services more enticing or you have to lower your costs which seeds some of the industry profitability to your buyers. The threat of new entrants um, a number of, uh, it is the essence of it is to what extent is it likely that other competitors are going to enter your market. And one example that Porter gives is if uh, it's not very costly to start a business in your industry, then there may be a threat of a lot of new entrants. And so when you think about it, for example, say you were going into the yogurt business, um, a yogurt shop, local yogurt shop. It's probably, to my knowledge, not very expensive to start a yogurt shop. You would need some uh, like ice cream slash yogurt machines. You would need to uh, either buy or rent a space. Let's just say rent a space because that'd be cheaper um, from a capital perspective. And um, you know, then the variable costs associated with the the actual yogurt and um, accoutrements that would come with it. 
uh, among other costs. But let's say it's much less expensive to get into the yogurt business than it is to go into, say, oil rigging, which would require a substantial amount of money and capital investment. So to the extent that there is a threat of new entrants, existing organizations in that space have to do things to prevent them from getting in. So it may mean that they have to find ways to cut costs. Um, it may mean that they have to spend more money in R&D to make their products or services more attractive, all of which, again, seed profitability away from the existing competitors in that space. And then lastly is the threat of substitute products or services. To the extent that there's a threat, then once again, companies have to invest money to keep people from changing um, and going to those substitutes, which once again is costly or price reducing and seeds profitability. As one example that I mentioned earlier, Southwest, the alternative to taking flying Southwest would be to actually um, take the bus take Amtrak, and so it's important for, um, for Southwest to make sure that people don't leave and go to that space or to those alternatives. So let me actually go down. So what he suggests is, I, would, I'm, I don't want to focus too much on this, but what he suggests is to the extent that the forces are strong in those industries, it lowers the potential profitability of those or the profitability of those selected industries So, or those industries. So um, as one example, security brokers and dealers typically have a higher return on invested capital than do the airlines, which are, are very, unfortunately, the four, five forces are very strong in the airline industry which dramatically reduces the profitability that the industry can uh, accrue. So, you know, for one, some have argued that um, an understanding of the five forces is important even in getting you to choose an industry. You know, if you're a conglomerate and you may consider moving into a different space, you can do an analysis of the five forces and decide that maybe it's not pro a profitable enough industry for you and you, don't, you aren't able to take advantages um, to stake out a reasonable position within that space. So um, I'm basically taking this from the first we go from the first page. Okay. Um, so for in the first page of the five forces model, he in essence again says look beyond and just uh, look beyond just analyzing your immediate competitors and in essence look at the five key forces that impact your industries and your profitability. So what he says is there are a th couple of different things that you can do with the knowledge on this, uh, using this model. One is position a company where the forces are weakest. And if you remember, he talks about, I don't know how to actually say the name of the company, but say Packer um, in the um, trucking business where the forces are strong in traditional trucking and and as a result would mean that uh, it wouldn't be necessarily as attractive an industry, but Packer has recognized the forces are weakest within one particular buying niche, which is people who own their own trucks because they have a real identification with those trucks. And as a consequence, the Packer, the company, has gone out of its way to provide customized services for to make those um, trucks more appealing for the individual buyers. And as a consequence, so things like um, make for um, attractive um, uh, interior spaces, for example, or leather, or things that are would be attractive to the individual buyer, but most companies in that space would not care about. So as a consequence, Packer's been able to accrue some reasonable profits and return on investment over time. Exploiting changes in your favor, he gives the example of Apple exploiting um, changes that occurred within the music industry, the, we'll say, brought more broadly the entertainment industry, in that in the advent of the internet and the prospect of illegal downloading as an alternative to buying from record companies, from mu music labels, um, 
Apple essentially consolidated the music industry in many ways by creating um, iTunes and iPods where it could provide the local space or the, um, the space for people to buy single downloadable songs. And if you remember, the, the paper reads that uh, music companies had thought about creating their own web portals to do this, but they were concerned about um, offering their own songs on, for example, comp competing labels uh, portals. So they didn't do it. So Apple took over and exploited a change in the industry. Also is this idea of reshaping forces in your favor. And so, um, for example, he says, if you want to uh, minimize the rivalry among competitors or trying to, and mitigate that prospect if those forces are strong, one thing that you can do is really try to do something unique and differentiate your product so that it won't, you um, would not as be as, uh, quote, amenable or susceptible to price cutting by other companies. And so there are a number of different actions that you can take. Let me make sure what I'm doing okay on time. Okay, so I'm okay for a few more minutes. So let me just be sure. The One of the reasons I chose these two articles, beyond the fact that the Apple case can be analyzed by both of these, is that these represent two strategic paradigms that you should be aware of. So when you take them together, they have strong implications for organizations and, and how they function strategically. So if we start at the top, this idea of what is strategy represents the competitive advantage paradigm or what's actually called the resource-based view of the firm. So the idea is consistent with uh, Porter's comments that profitability is derived from competitive advantages, those difficult to imitate unique resources, attributes, um, or uh, interlocking activities. So as one example, McKinsey and Company, which is arguably one of, if not the best known strategy consulting firm or, or consulting firm in the world, it, its primary competitive advantage is its human talent because it hires incredibly uh, gifted um, individuals or smart individuals. So the key concepts associated with this strategic paradigm is this notion of a competitive advantage. That is the ability gained from attributes and resources to outperform competitors. And also this generic and other strategies are typically associated with competitive advantage because competitive advantage often accrues from activities aimed at uh, creating lower costs or um, differentiating one oneself as an organization. So the implication of this from a practical perspective is if you want to be profitable, create a competitive advantage or resources at the organization level. Um, in brief, the five forces model is alternatively called industrial organization economics. So this is, uh, the five forces are very, very much highly under underpinned by economics. And the idea is, the key concept is industry attractiveness. The overall industry profitability is a function of each of the five forces in conjunction with each other. So one um, potential practical implication is, if you want to be profitable, you have to consider the context within which the industry operates, as well as actions that you take, excuse me, within, um, at a company level. Okay. So one last thing, and then I will get on to my uh, next set of slides. So the, the 7S model, as you've seen here, was developed by McKinsey Consultants. And the only thing that I really want to highlight here is that this 7S framework uh, notes that this idea of fit or alignment between the seven S's. Um, they, it is a model that is generally used to, in, to analyze the internal organization environment in an organization, whereas the five forces looks typically beyond the organization at what's going on in the environment. So internal environment and external environment. So taken together, sustained profitability is a function of competitive advantages that are tough to imitate and unique to the competitive landscape. Profitability is also the function of an industry's competitive forces. And it's important to consider both external and internal environments as part of strategic formulation.